So my last episode was all about making the perfect no tree and this caused quite a stir in the comments. I had hundreds of comments from people going, where'd you put halation, where'd you put glow, where'd you put your grain, why are you putting your grain there and not the beginning, all this sort of stuff. But the most common thing that kept coming up was where'd you put noise reduction? And it made me realize I haven't actually done a single episode about noise reduction at all. I'm gonna show you exactly where noise reduction goes. I'm gonna show you two different examples actually because I don't put it in the same place religiously on every single program. I'm gonna show you why I would change where it goes in the notary. I'm also gonna show you a couple of really good tips on how to dial in exactly the right amount of noise reduction. And to do that, I've been very kindly allowed to use an actual BBC One documentary that I worked on in June. It's called Tommy Jessup Goes to Hollywood. I'll put a link to it in the description. And Tommy's brother, Will, is actually the director. I've worked with him a couple of times now, and he's very kindly let me use the footage from that to show you a real world example. So let's get straight into it. So this is the actual original project that I worked on. You can see my node structure is very similar to what I gave away in my last episode. And this is a one hour BBC documentary. So let's have a look at how many shots that would be. So looking in Lightbox, I've got all clips selected and it's 661, which is very typical for a one hour documentary. The reason I'm pointing that out is because I don't use noise reduction unless I really have to. I don't like using noise reduction. It's as simple as that. If I filter this by noise reduction, you can now see how many clips I've actually got noise reduction on, and it is 56. So it's less than 10% of the program has got noise reduction on it. And you can see quite clearly some of this stuff is very low light. This is a sort of fly on the wall type documentary, uh, a lot of run and gun shooting. So you're obviously gonna get scenarios where the lighting is not perfect. So that's mainly why there's noise reduction in there. So to allow me to explain the different techniques of noise reduction, I've chosen two very specific clips from the documentary and I've put them into a separate timeline. So let me just show you what that is about. I've got a shot here and let me just quickly scrub through that and I've got a shot here and they both have different noise reduction properties and they're in different places on the timeline. So you can see this one is on node two and the previous shot, the noise reduction is actually on node three. So I'm gonna explain why that is happening. So let's take this first shot here and let's have a look at what's going on. Now, just to show you a quick bit about the color management that's going on here, if I go to my settings, go to color management, we're in our regular DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate Timeline color space, and our output color space, Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, and we're using CSTs for our color management, okay? All documented in that episode last week. I've got one on the end here. This is taking us DaVinci Wide Gamma to 709, as always, and our front CST is our camera profile up to DaVinci Wide Gamma, and the camera profile on this one is Panasonic V-Log, okay? So it's Panasonic camera. What I want to show you first is how it looked, but with the CSTs on. So it's not the log image. I'm going to show you it's in the correct color space and you'll see what's going on. So I've just got a wipe here. This is the image. As you can see, it's really underexposed. And so the first thing I had to do was lift it using this node here. Okay, that's a lot of lifting to do in there. Because it's underexposed, you've got noise and I've had to lift it a lot. So this is why I've put the noise reduction after this node in this instance. Okay, normally I would have it after the CST straight away, but this one needed so much lifting that I've actually put it in third. I wanted to lift the image up first. Now, if I switch this noise reduction off, you will see how much noise is in here. Let me just zoom in a little bit for you. I'll zoom in 200% and you can see a lot of noise in here. Okay. So let's have a look at what I did for this shot. I'm gonna put it back to uh, fit. I'm gonna bring up a couple of scopes here. So we're gonna have our parade and our vector scope going on. And let's just switch that on and off. You can see quite clearly the noise even in the scope. So, so what I'm gonna do in this is I'm gonna reset that noise reduction. I'm gonna build it from scratch. So on your scopes, make sure that you don't have this selected. It's a low pass filter. And what that does is filter out noise on the scope. So we wanna see the noise on our scopes is our first tip. All right, and then what we're gonna do is come over to here. So we've got our motion effects. So this is just selected from here, this row here. And we've got two different types of noise reduction. We've got temporal noise reduction and spatial noise reduction. Motion blur on the end here is just in that category. It's not noise reduction at all. It's just a, it's literally motion blur. So it, sometimes it can help disguise it, but it's not part of noise reduction. So temporal noise reduction is looking at um, forward and backward frames in time. So what it's doing is taking a, uh, a single frame that you're on and depending how many frames I select here, up to five, will depend how many frames forward and backwards it looks at changes 
in the shot, thereby determining what could be noise, okay? Now, once you go above three into four, five, your system literally will grind to a halt, okay? It's really, really slow performance. I've got a really fast Mac here. And when I go into four or five frames, temporal noise reduction, my system pretty much grinds to a halt. I generally start at two, and I often will just stick at two. I want two frames forward, two frames backward. So the motion estimation type is faster, is obviously gonna give you uh, faster rendering, but slower results. And we always want better. We always want the best results. So no point in putting that onto faster at all. And the motion range here is saying how much motion is actually in the shot itself. So if I just put this into loop play, and then we just start playing. There's not actually a lot of motion going on in this shot. So what you're doing is helping the temporal noise reduction know how much movement should be in a shot. So if you're doing a whip pan, obviously that's a lot of movement. Okay, so we'll just put that to medium. So there's not actually any noise reduction applied yet because these figures here, luminance and chrominance, are still set to zero, okay? By default, these are linked together. So as we start moving up, we start introducing noise reduction. And you can see that's going much softer already. And let's take it back off and we can see the noise. Now, one thing I do with this is I keep an eye on the scopes, all right? So watch, this is our RGB parade, so it's the red, green, and blue channels, and this is vector scope, which is our saturation. And I'm gonna unlink these. So the first thing we do is dial in temporal noise reduction in the Luma channel. And let's just look at our scope and see what's happening. So as I move that, you can see there's a point at which, and if you look around here, there's a point at which it takes out the noise and then it doesn't do anything anymore. So that would be a good point to start at. You just find the point where it kicks and then just come back a little bit. Let's have a look what's happening with the chroma. Okay, there's a little bit in the shadows there as I'd expect, okay? So just down in the shadows, that is being affected, okay? But not so much in the highlights there. So somewhere around about there. So let's leave that set for there for now. The motion here is, this is helping with aliasing and artifacts that you might get on the image when temporal noise reduction is applied. So you can adjust that higher or lower amounts of motion. And the blend is obviously blending it back to zero. So if I have that back to on 100, I've actually effectively taken the temporal noise reduction off. All right, let's have a look at spatial noise reduction. What spatial noise reduction is working on a frame by frame basis. So it's much more accurate than the temporal noise reduction. It's literally analyzing the image and it's trying to keep as much detail as it possibly can. So it's a far more intelligent noise reduction. But again, this is much more processor intensive. So you've got your faster mode. We don't want to work faster, okay? We want to work at least better. The radius is the amount of softening or blurring, if you like, that the spatial noise reduction is going to apply to the image. So we want to keep this as small as possible. So start with small. If you need to build it up, we can go higher. So next, we've got the threshold for our spatial noise reduction. And Luma and Chroma are actually locked together. This is because we're in better mode. You need to go to enhanced mode in order to make them run independently. Now, a quick tip here is that if you go up to the effects, you've actually got noise reduction as one of these open effects. And the reason for that is it now works in the edit page as well. So it needs to be in this column. So you can grab exactly the same settings that you've got here in your open effects. Let me just type in noise and see if we can find it. There it is. I'm just gonna put it onto a blank node for the minute so you can just see the menu. But what's nice with this one is if I go to spatial noise reduction and go to better, I can actually separate luminance and chrominance out. So if you need to do that, but you just want to work in better and not enhanced, you should use it using the open effects. And in fact, sometimes I get better quality from the better mode than in enhanced mode. So it's worth playing with both. The main reason I'm not using it as an open effects all the time is because I'm on the advanced panel and it's really, really quick to dial in noise reduction on the panel. So what we're doing now is just having a look at how much temporal and how much spatial to put in. And ideally I wanna be working with spatial a bit more than temporal. So I try and get them to about a half split. So whatever I've got going on in spatial, I'll try and sort of work on measurements around about half in the temporal. Don't go exactly half, but somewhere around that sort of ratio. So we've been using our parade and our vector scope at the minute. If I just switch that on and off that node, we can see it's definitely reducing noise reduction. And let's just zoom into the image. Let's have a look at what's really going on here. It's his face that is concerning me quite a lot in here. We wanna make sure that that doesn't look noisy. If I play that in a loop, okay, you can see without noise reduction on, it really did need noise reduction in this instance, okay? I avoid it like the plague, but I did actually need it here. So let's just put it back on. And I just don't want to go too heavy. I don't, it's a little bit of a soft shot anyway, but I don't want to overdo it. So let's just dial in a little bit more spatial threshold. 
and just see what we can get. Okay, now the second tip I've got for how much to dial in is coming away from the scopes. So again, we just check in that it's actually affecting it. Okay, that's not really affecting it much there. In fact, if I take my temporal threshold down a bit more, let's see if I can actually reduce it better using spatial threshold. Yeah, there's a little bit coming in there. So if I put my chroma there and my luma there, I'm just playing around with these. But what I'm gonna do is switch to a different mode. And if you go up to your highlight tool and press AB, what that does is show you what you're doing just on that node. Okay, so if I switch all my noise reduction off, let me just do this brutally, there's nothing appearing because we haven't actually done anything. So let's go back and dial in our settings again. We're gonna go two, we're gonna go better, we're gonna say uh, medium, and we're just gonna dial in just Luma. And there we can see what's being affected. Let's put a little bit of chroma in there, and let's go to our spatial. Let's start with better and small. I'm just going to dial it in. And what I want to do is keep dialing it in, but protecting the edges of his face. Okay, so the main features. We want this noise here taken out, but we don't want to be in a position where we're seeing like this. This means we've got very heavy noise reduction going on. So I'm just going to dial that back again. And I'm just going to go until we can just see his face, and I'm going to knock it back a little bit. And just by default, we seem to have got, so it's 27, 28, so half of that would be about 14. So we're a little bit less than half. Let's just punch in a little bit more of this then. Again, half is just a little rule that I've used. And let's punch that back a little bit more. Switch the AB off, or sorry, switch the highlight off. And let's have a look at how much noise reduction we've got going on there. So it's done a really good job of cleaning up the image, but this is looking far too false now. It looks a little bit plasticky, so I'm gonna dial it back. We could use blend here, but I'd rather actually dial back the amount of noise reduction than blend it back. So something like that. So let's have a look with it on. So obviously we need to have it on. It looks much better. This is far too distracting for the viewer. And we'll put it on. It's doing a good job of clearing up here and here. Okay, let me have a look at the whole image. And press play. All right, so that to me is looking much better than that. You've got to always just put it on and take it off. Just check that you're actually improving the image. We could add grain and sharpen and things like that to bring a little bit of that sort of grit back. I've got it on the end here after the CST. So I tend to work my grain in Rec 709. And if I just switch that on and off, and you can see it affecting the scopes, but let's just see what it's actually doing to the image. Yeah, it's just putting a little bit of texture back in. Just to show you my settings on that, if I go to effects, I've got uh, grain strength increased, and if I'm my advanced controls, I normally bring down the highlights a little bit. I don't want as much grain in the highlights as I do in the shadows and midtones. All right, so that's that shot done. Now what I'm gonna do is move on to the second shot and have a look what's going on here. So this shot, let me just show you the whole thing. My noise reduction is on node two, and the reason for that is if I just command D, that's log, obviously, but the exposure was actually very good on this one. It just happens to have picked up a bit of noise. So if I disable that and play through, the noise on this one is actually in a certain focused area, and it was just a little bit distracting, but if you look at his jumper and look at the camera even, we can see noise in there. Okay, can you see it? And there's noise here, okay? And I just found it a little too distracting. So I don't want a lot of noise reduction on this. I just want enough to take the edge off that. So let's put the noise reduction on and play that through. And that's much better, it's cleaned it up. So what I've done with the noise reduction on this shot is I've isolated the shadows into the mid-tones area and I've kept the highlights out of noise reduction. So I don't want any noise reduction on his face. His face is looking great there. It's just the jumper and the camera that I really wanted affected. So to do that, I used a qualifier. Okay, so before I reset this qualifier, have a look at Tommy's face here. Okay, you can see it's got really good detail in it. And if I reset this qualifier, you can see that it's gone far too smooth. Okay, it doesn't look quite as natural. So let's rebuild the qualification that I did. I used a luminance qualifier, and I'm gonna switch on my highlight. I don't wanna be in AB mode this time, I want to be in this mode so I can see what's going on. So I'm gonna use the luminance qualifier here to protect the areas of highlight. So let's just bring that down until it goes in. Yep, yeah, so we're just keeping his jumper exposed to noise reduction, the camera here, and obviously we need to soften that off or it's gonna look really quite abrupt. So something like that. Maybe I just knock that back a little bit. So I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing and explain at the same time. Something like that. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna enable and disable. So there we can see the noise reduction is nicely taken out his jumper. 
and his face has been protected. Okay, we've just got a little bit going in there, but let's just play it through. Always play noise reduction, you really want to play it. And if you're struggling to play this in real time, what you can do is go to playback, go to render cache, say user, right hand click on here and say node cache on. And then that will now render. So if I play that through, it's going to start rendering. It will go blue once it's rendered. There you go. So we've now got real time playback of that noise reduction. And anything I do after that, this will stay rendered. If I do anything before it, then it will need to re render that cache. Okay, that's a disadvantage of doing the node too late in the timeline. So take a look at this video that's appearing here if you want a better breakdown of my perfect node tree. This is the node tree I used on this BBC program as well. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode. That was definitely a 10 out of 10. Oh, wishes.